Hi everybody, it's Mr. Hamilton here. Today we're going to look at how much you would weigh on Mars. Specifically, we're going to look at it through the lens of gravitational field strength. Now, we all have likely heard of the idea that the force of gravity is equal to your mass times g. Well, what is g? Well, g is that gravitational field strength. And it's going to change based on what planets you're actually on. We also know that the force of gravity, based on Newton's universal law of gravitation, is represented by the gravitational constant, g, times the mass of a planet times the mass of an object on the planet, divided by the radius squared. And so we can say these two things are equal to each other. And if we divide both sides by the mass of the object on the planet, those cancel out. And so the universal, or the gravitational field strength on any given planet or any distance from a planet is equal to this because clearly it's going to change based on how far away you are from a planet and it's going to change based on how massive the planet actually is. In the case of Mars and the case of Earth, that's the thing that's interesting to look at and compare. So I'm going to give you a few numbers here. The first one is the mass of Mars. The mass of Mars is 6.39 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. And if you compare that to the mass of Earth, the mass of Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And it's worth noting that the mass of Earth is about 10 times bigger, approximately. In terms of the magnitude, the power of 10, it's about 10 times. Now, that might you might think, well, doesn't that mean that the gravitational field strength on Earth is 10 times bigger? No, because as we just discussed, the R value, or the radius, the distance between the centers of masses, is also taken into account. And so if you're on the surface of Mars, the radius of Mars at that point would be, um, if you look this up on Google, you get 3389.5 kilometers, which we then can convert to, we're going to multiply by 1,000, and we are going to put that in scientific notation. So 3.3895 times 10 to the 6 meters. The radius of Earth, because Earth is more massive, it has a larger radius, is going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So its radius is almost twice as much, but its mass is 10 times bigger. But again, we can't just say 10 divided by 2, it's 5 times because the radius is squared. So that would be one way to look at it. You could just multiply those differences uh, more precisely and figure them out. What we're going to do though is we're going to figure out specifically what each of these gravitational field strengths are. So for Earth, it's just g times the mass of Earth divided by the radius of Earth, all squared. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You sub those numbers in and you find that value. The value that we find in this particular case, and I'll give you the universal constant as well, uh, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. You end up getting a value that's very familiar to us, somewhat different just based on how some of the numbers have been rounded, but 9.7991 Newtons. So basically 9.8 Newtons, and it's per kilogram. Now, if we do the same thing for Mars, and we take the universal constant, and we multiply that by the mass of Mars, and we then divide that by the radius of Mars squared, we end up getting a value of 3.7098 newtons per kilogram. And so we compare those two numbers um, very simply by just simply saying uh, g of the Mars divided by the uh, gravitational field strength on Earth would be, dividing those two numbers, would give us 0 0.379. In other words, um, your weight is 37 0.9% on Mars what it is on Earth. Well, that's all very well and interesting, but it's important to distinguish the difference again between weight and mass. Weight is a measure of the force of gravity acting on you, and we know that we calculate weight by taking the mass and multiplying it by that gravitational field strength. 
So when we do it on Earth, we get, if you waste, let's say you have a mass of 75 kilograms on that spring scale on Earth. If you stepped on a scale, your weight would be that 75 kilograms times that 9.7991, and you'd get a weight of 735 newtons. Likewise, if you step, if you uh, were to take your weight on Mars, you would take 75 kilograms and multiply it by g, which is 3.7098, and you would get 278 newtons. You would actually weigh much less. And in fact, if you were to step on a spring scale on Mars, it would read 28.4 kilograms if you were 75.0 kilograms on Earth. Well, that's all well and good. But the thing is that the actual mass doesn't change. It's 75 kilograms on Earth, and technically speaking, mass is fixed at that point. So even though a spring scale may read less on Mars or on the top of a, uh, on a top of a mountain, for example, your actual mass is fixed. It's only your weight that changes. So what's the moral of this story? Well, first off, if we do go to Mars, our body is going to have to adapt to much less gravity, which is possibly going to affect things like bone density and things like that. The second thing, though, is this. If you want to lose weight, go to Mars. If you want to lose mass, hit the treadmill.